Good morning, distinguished guests, Alliance partners, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first Cook Stoves Future Summit. It is truly a thrill to look around this room and see so many passionate advocates of clean cooking. I have a lot of exciting news to share today, but before I begin, I'd like to recognize our Leadership Council, our Advisory Council members, and our summit co-hosts, British Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for International Development, Baroness Lindsay Northover, Norwegian Foreign Minister, Borge Brende, Ghanaian Foreign Minister, Hannah Tete, USAID Administrator, Raj Shah, and the Honorary Chair of the Alliance's Leadership Council and former US Secretary of State, Hillary Rodham Clinton. I mentioned Mrs. Clinton last, but in the history of the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves, she must come first. After all, she launched the Global Alliance and brought much needed attention to this issue in 2010 at the Clinton Global Initiative. I remember sitting in the audience that day as she spoke passionately about the fact that the simple act of cooking a meal over an open fire has devastating and far-reaching effects. As Kathy mentioned, each year over 4 million premature deaths are caused by exposure to cook stove smoke. 500 million tons of non-renewable fuel wood a year spew out about 21% of global black carbon emissions. And that soot pollutes our earth, destroys our atmosphere, and melts our glaciers. In addition to the devastating toll on health and the environment, open fires used for cooking have a serious impact on the economic and social empowerment of women and girls. Hours spent gathering fuel, feeding the fire, and cooking food could be better spent in school, running a small business, raising children, or tending to crops. Of course, in 2010, no one was suggesting that the cook stove problem was a new one. A lot of smart people had already been working on this issue, and progress had been made. But the sector had been unable to convene around a common strategy that would tackle the overwhelming scope of the issue. And despite its magnitude, the issue had a surprisingly low profile on the global stage. But the Alliance proposed a new model, a new method, and a new way of thinking. It challenged its partners to look outside their own sectors, think beyond their geographic boundaries, and break through their development silos. It asked them to pool their resources and work together in a public-private partnership of donors and investors, national governments and small businesses, researchers and NGOs, women's collectives, and global corporations. And the Alliance offered a new paradigm. It would create sustainable solutions by enabling a thriving market for clean cook stoves and fuels. The idea was not to give away stoves and hope that they would be, that would be used. The Alliance was designed to promote, develop, and distribute a range of useful, desirable, and yes, profitable products. Products that would engage those at the base of the pyramid first and foremost as valuable customers and not just as recipients of aid. The Alliance's vision was pioneering and some said our goal to deploy 100, 100 million households with clean cooking solutions by 2020 ambitious. But we refuse to be constrained by the preconceived notion about what the sector could and could not do. It was time to test the limits of the possible. And so the Alliance team formulated a disciplined 10-year strategic plan structured in three phases. Its intent was to provide a clear roadmap for the creation of a dynamic market. I'm glad to say that thanks to the support and commitment of the people in this room, the strategy is working. As our phase one draws to a close at the end of this year, the Alliance has helped facilitate the adoption of more than 20 million cleaner and more efficient cook stoves and fuels, which puts us ahead of our targets for 2014. This success in just four years reflects the passion, the energy, the commitment of clean cooking advocates worldwide. In 2010, the Alliance had 19 members. Now it has more than 1,000 partners who are out there right now driving this market and working with us to address this silent killer. Total stoves distributed is just but one metric of our success. In phase one, building on the efforts of PCIA, the Alliance played a leadership role in the development of common ISO standards and universal testing protocols. 
These will help manufacturers install quality products, develop and install quality products, and differentiate their technologies in the marketplace. In order to make the case for large-scale investment and demonstrate the value of clean cooking intervention, the Alliance has also focused on building the evidence base. Over the last four years, we have supported 39 different studies across 23 countries on health, gender, climate impacts, and on market and consumer research. Research on gender is critically important because we cannot address sustainable development without also addressing women's empowerment and gender equality. The latest findings from the UN Women's 2014 Gender Equality and Sustainable Development Report support this approach. In fact, the report is unequivocal in its call for greater investment in clean cook stoves. The report identifies this intervention as one of four areas that not only achieve sustainable development, but also transform the lives of women and girls. In phase one, the Alliance set out to drive greater investment by supporting enterprises that have the potential to reach financial viability and real scale. We raised 50 million in grant funding and leveraged another 50 million in investment into the sector and created the Spark Fund, the Pilot Fund, and the Women's Empowerment Fund. These funds promote innovation in design, manufacturing, distribution, and gender empowerment, and they've attracted a stellar range of applicants with impressive entrepreneurial talents. The Alliance has also benefited from the growth of several dynamic national and regional alliances that are gathering momentum. These local alliances have helped conceive and develop country action plans and are working with their respective governments to build clean cooking solutions into health, energy, and environmental policies. And perhaps most important of all, we have just started to prepare to launch campaigns to raise awareness and support behavior change. We know that if given access and a means to own a variety of clean cooking technologies, millions of men and women will solve the problem of household air pollution through their very purchasing and daily use decisions. And let me emphasize that this sector does offer a wide range of solutions. People in different countries have different needs because they cook differently. The Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves is in reality the Global Alliance for Clean Cooking. And the fact that it is technology and fuel neutral is key to its success. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. In India, where gas and electric induction cooking is making huge inroads, customers have been able to skip steps along the energy ladder. In other countries, customers are taking smaller steps. They may have access to improved stoves, but not to clean burning stoves. In fact, a truly clean burning stove with a clean fuel, while highly desirable and where we want to go, might be years away for some people. But just because we can't give these users and customers the best solution now, does not mean we shouldn't give them a better solution. This is not a controversial decision, it's a practical one. And in reality, it's not even our decision to make. We believe in a market-based system, and when it comes to products, the consumer must make the final decision. We've made significant uh, progress in phase one and have focused on laying the groundwork that will help us support real scale. As we move into phase two of our strategic plan, we are confident that our network of 1,000 plus partners can help us execute our goal of reaching 60 million households by the year 2017. That goal is fully achievable especially given the fact that we continue to increase our profile and the issues profile and gain momentum within the global health community. As many of you are aware, the World Health Organization recently released its guidelines for indoor air quality, and this, of course, lends enormous credibility and authority to our work. We certainly embrace our role as catalysts for the clean cooking sector, and in the coming years, we'll support the implementation of these guidelines with the WHO through ministries of health and other partner organizations, particularly in our focus countries. In phase two, we will continue to promote further innovation and enterprise capacity building through our Spark and Pilot Innovation Funds and encourage product standardization, labeling, and certification in accordance with ISO standards. We will make clean cook stoves and fuels accessible and affordable by working with financial institutions to support consumer finance. 
and we will also drive growth capital into the sector. As clean fuels are so critical to our mission, we will make efforts to strengthen at least four different fuel supply chains across our focus countries. We will also pursue policy and regulatory reforms to further optimize market growth. These initiatives and more are outlined in the roadmap for phase two of our strategic plan, which we are pleased to release today. We have built a solid foundation. We have surpassed our phase one targets. We have tested and proven that our approach works, and we have showcased that this is a global issue with global leadership and ownership across the public and private sectors. Now it is time to turn up that flame and truly transform the way the world cooks. And that is why we organized this summit, because if there was ever a time to invest in clean cook stoves and fuels, that time is now. The opportunity is real, we know that the market is poised to scale, and the imperative for action is now ours. We live in a world that is beset by problems that stubbornly resist solutions. But here is a problem that affects three billion people, and the solution is within our grasp and within our means. With just 500 million in grants and investments, we can go a long way towards executing our phase two goals. I stand here before you confident that together we can meet this milestone, and so I encourage you to redouble your efforts and deepen your commitment to concrete financial, policy, and programmatic actions to accelerate this market. Your investment in the Global Alliance and the sector at large is critical. It will improve public health, empower women and girls, and protect our environment. It is one investment that can actually guarantee life-saving returns, and it will certainly pay dividends for many decades to come. Thank you very much. Thank you.